one child could be biting for escape while another child could be biting for access to attention. And that behavior might look exactly the same and have two different functions. And a behavior could look totally different and have the same function. So that's why we're always looking at what is this child trying to say and how can we get into the, the root or the function of this behavior. Hi, I'm Shana, and I've been in the field of ABA and autism for over 20 years. Hi, I'm Shira, and I am a teacher turned BCBA, and we are both board-certified behavior analysts, and together we created How to ABA. Our mission is to empower ABA professionals by sharing relevant strategies and actionable tips on our blog, podcast, and YouTube channel. We want to make quality ABA programs available to more people so that you can feel confident and master what you love. Today, we're going to be answering the question, what is function-based intervention? We get a lot of questions about behavior. I mean, we're board certified behavior analysts, right? That's in our title, board certified behavior analysts, right? We get a lot of questions about, you know, I have a child who bites or I have a child who hits, a child who engages in tantrum. What do I do uh, when my child does this? And my question is, well, why? Not why should we do what we do? But why does your child engage in those negative behaviors? It's not about the what. It's not about the topography of the behavior. A child might bite for a variety of different reasons. Um, It's really about the why. Why specifically is your child engaging in that behavior? What is that individual trying to tell us? I really don't think your child wants to engage in those negative behaviors, but maybe they have limited communication skills, or maybe they've learned something that's incompatible with what they should be doing. So what do I mean by that? So for instance, you know, if I'm finding something very difficult and I don't know how to tell you that it's very difficult, I might lash out. I might hit you. I might tantrum. I might put my head down on the table and just cry. Um, And I'm trying to tell you that's way too difficult. I'm trying to do that because I'm trying to escape the situation or I'm trying to avoid it. Mm -hmm. Um, Alternatively, you know, I have some learners who really don't know how to engage in appropriate social interaction. You know, they might be trying to get into a group at school and don't know how to do that. Um, And they might, you know, push a child on the playground um, because they really want that child's attention. It's not because they're malicious. They really just don't know how to get into social play. So that might be a function of attention. Um, So when we look at topography of behavior, we need to look at why or what we call the function of behavior. So all behavior is communication. It's all trying to tell us something. And the reason that it keeps happening is because in some way it's working for the client. So it means that they're getting what they want through this behavior. So if they want a cookie and crying gets them a cookie, then they'll continue to cry to get that cookie. The function of their behavior was the cookie. Um, There are a couple major functions that we talk about within ABA. The acronym is SEAT, and that stands for sensory, escape, attention, and tangible. So the four main reasons that somebody might engage in any one of those challenging behaviors, and it could look like any number of things, biting, pinching, scratching, tantruming, is for them to get access to something like attention or tangible, or for them to get away from something, which is escape. And there's that sensory or automatic reinforcement, which is just, it feels good. It's automatically reinforcing just to engage in that behavior. And so when someone asks, what should I do? My child is biting or my child is pinching. It doesn't matter as much to us what that behavior looks like. Of course, we're going to track it. But what we're really trying to find out is what is this behavior trying to say? Or what's the function of that behavior? So some one child could be biting for escape while another child could be biting for access to attention. And that behavior might look exactly the same and have two different functions. And a behavior could look totally different and have the same function. So that's why we're always looking at what is this child trying to say and how can we get into the the root or the function of this behavior? And we're look, when we're looking at the behavior and the reason why is because if we treat it as in like, okay, well, my child's biting, what do I do about that? And I just say some kind of solution we're not getting to the functions. We're either putting a bandaid on the behavior and either another behavior will pop up in its place or that behavior was never solved. It won't go away. Um, But even worst case scenario, what if, you know, I treated a behavior just based on the topography, but the behavior was for escape 
and I started, you know, letting them get out of task. Um, well, then what they're going to do is they're actually going to engage in that behavior more. Or if they were engaging in behavior as a result of attention, and then all of a sudden I gave them a bunch of attention for engaging that negative behavior, they may engage in that negative behavior more because it's getting them what they're looking for. So we really need to understand what the, what the reason why the function of the behavior is so that we can treat it from a function-based approach so we're not putting a band-aid on the on skills to get them what they want. So what is function-based intervention? Well, it involves a series of steps. We'll start with collecting, defining the behavior, collecting some baseline data, getting a functional behavior assessment done. And that could look different depending on what the behavior is and what the environment is, but asking the right questions and making the right theories of why this behavior is happening. And then developing a treatment plan. That treatment plan will usually include some sort of um, functional communication training to replace or replacement skill to replace that challenging behavior. And then ongoing data collection to monitor, like, was I right? Was this theory of behavior function correct? And continuing to monitor that and hopefully seeing the behavior decrease throughout the intervention. For access to more free resources, programs, downloads, and data sheets, check out our free membership at howtoaba.com slash free dash materials. Mm -hmm.